I'll get you to hit. Sounds okay. good. There it is. <laughs> Well, that's a great uh, thing to be able to do for those who can't make it tonight. Yeah, um, and we'll have it up on, on a link to uh, the, the video afterwards so people who can't make it tonight can watch it another time. I'll just try to share my screen here. I have a little presentation that we can go through. It's only about 15, probably 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and then any questions? Um, Actually, we're quite a small group here, so I think if, if you have questions or comments as we're going through, just um, feel free to drop in and, and ask it or, or make a comment. I know we all mostly know each other on the on the call, but uh, I noticed a couple of us are just in Mahone Bay this evening, so maybe we <laughs> do some introductions. Yeah, that's a great idea. I can start. <laughs> um, I'm Catherine. I'm the Climate and Energy Program Manager uh, for the town of Mahone Bay. Um, so my main focus is on, on GHG reduction actions. Um, so active transportation is a, is a key part of um, my work with the town. Um, I'll just bump it over maybe to Sarah if she wants to, to give her brief introduction. Hi there, I'm Sarah and I'm the Climate and Energy Intern this summer with Mahone Bay. And yeah, it's been really fun working under Catherine and uh, with the town of Mahone Bay this summer so far. So, uh, maybe I'll bump it to Mo. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, so I'm Mo, I'm the town clerk and deputy CAO. And I um, have been watching what these ladies have been pulling together with this project. So I'm really curious to hear the rest that goes with it because I know they've done a lot of work on the uh, the information they've already gathered from the community. So I'm excited to be here. I uh, will bump it to the Wilson household. I'm Kelly, I'm a counselor and I'm here under strict supervision tonight. So I'll be very quiet. My supervisor, Marilyn is with me. Marilyn <laughs> Swinimer Wilson, I'm a trail user. I'll jump in then. We didn't we didn't get bumped. Uh, Dylan Hyde, CIO with the town. Um, obviously interest in uh, everything the town's doing, but also on the traffic authority. So to the extent that these um, conversations impact on streets and sidewalks in the town, uh, have a lot of interest in uh, in ensuring that uh, all goes safely. Hmm. Oh, and I'll throw it over to David. I'm Dave Devenny. I'm the mayor of the town of Mahone Bay. And I'm here on behalf of the 1,047, 48 citizens of the town who have a, a definite interest in the outcome of all of our projects, but this one in particular. Oh, good evening, folks. Sorry, I was uh, I, I was just uh, doing some other work there, and I apologize. I didn't realize I didn't have my picture on. Um, I'm Stephen Bear. I'm the uh, senior manager of procurement and facilities uh, with the Nova Scotia Liquor Corporation at the head office here in Halifax. And uh, uh, Dylan had sent out a note to our team, so um, I'm just. Uh, Thank you for the invite. We're just here as a good corporate citizen and neighbor to hear what's up. And uh, Dylan suggested we might want to listen in. So uh, I'll be a fly on the wall and uh, interested to hear what uh, what is coming of these trails. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that you were able to join us. I know I did send that invitation and um, principally so that you know when we talk about how the um, project comes, you know, how, how these discussions come around the vicinity of NSLC Mahone Bay, you'll know how important this conversation is in the broader community context. Yeah, so I, that, I just for the for the greater group on a, on a personal note, I have deep roots in Mahone Bay. I know the area quite well. Uh, my, my grandfather uh, retired there. He, he lived in Chester Basin, but retired and lived over on the Oakland Road for many years. My, my aunt lives down in the area. My, my son and daughter-in-law were j just lived there until recently. So uh, it's almost like a second home. So I, you know, just beautiful town, great people. So uh, yeah, just uh, even though I happen to work and represent the corporation tonight, 
as uh, I, uh, I have deep roots there. So uh, uh, great, great place. Can't say enough good things about Mahone Bay. You're all, you're all very fortunate. <laughs> we know. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Um, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, I'm gonna try to start sharing my screen, um, but if we could all go on, on mute um, if you're not talking, uh, just to avoid any background noise, um, we'll get started. Can everyone see my shared screen now? Okay. All right, so welcome to tonight's open house. We're here to discuss our community-wide bicycle route. So the presentation that I have prepared, um, it will go over a couple of things. Over the past few weeks, we've um, been distributing a, a link to an online survey to community members. So this uh, presentation will go over those survey results. And really the basis of that survey and this presentation are the concept designs that were presented in uh, a report done by Bicycle Nova Scotia in 2019. Um, and they kind of devised a route throughout town that they thought would make uh, a great bicycle route. So as part of the, the survey, we wanted to identify which aspects of that report residents preferred um, and if they had any alternatives or suggestions or feedback on that. So this presentation kind of briefly goes over all of those different pieces. So the Blue Route um, Hubs Bikeway project is, uh, the goal of that project is to make a, a bike route across all of Nova Scotia, um, connecting all communities. Um, so Mohon Bay is, is trying to come together and, and create a route through town that will not only connect to this bigger project, but also make active transportation more feasible within the town. So the main goal of this particular project for Mahone Bay is to develop a proposal and apply for funding um, to improve the infrastructure for cycling in Mahone Bay. So with this project, we wanna encourage active transportation, not only to create a healthy community, um, but also to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions from you know, choosing active transportation instead of using your vehicle to drive around. Um, and also using active transportation allows us to take in so much more beauty of our, of our town. We want this, um, in the end, we want this route um, to be accessible to all ages and all abilities that feel comfortable riding. Um, and we really want to safely connect uh, the different parts of town. So I know um, the connection to the school is really important because if we want our kids biking to school, safety is a really um, top priority for that, that area. So the results of the survey, um, we had about 80 responses, which was really great. Um, overall, we found that most people are using the, they're cycling for recreation and exercise, and about half of them are actually using them for transportation purposes, so going um, to the stores or going to an appointment or to work. Um, this graph here kind of shows where people are cycling throughout town. So the majority of people are trying to get to the trails and using them um, and the surrounding areas. So a lot of the survey respondents um, that weren't in Mahone Bay uh, were actually coming from Lunenburg or Bridgewater, um, a lot from Mater's Cove and Chester area. Um, so that's really great to know um, so that we can help facilitate their, their cycling in through town if they're coming from these surrounding areas and also to facilitate Mahone Bay residents to get to those surrounding areas if they would also like to do that. And we can see that a lot of people are cycling to the waterfront and to shop. It, there isn't so many people cycling to the school, uh, to work, to playgrounds or to the pool. This could be because maybe more adults were filling out the survey, um, but also, maybe parents don't feel comfortable having their kids cycle to school or to the playgrounds because of um, some different barriers uh, and safety issues, which brings us to the next slide, which was the current barriers to cycling that respondents had highlighted. Vehicle speeds was a main one, and we did see this a lot um, during our transportation planning last year as well. Um, other safety measures um, were 
you know, crosswalk, that safer crosswalk. Um, there were no, there's no bike lanes through town. Um, having good road conditions that make it safe to take your bike on were some of the other barriers. Um, under other here, the main suggestions again were, were speed limits, crosswalks, uh, a suggestion about route mapping, which is really great if we do decide to do uh, some route through town that we have it mapped out and identifiable so people can find their way safely through that new route. So this is the general overview of the Bicycle Nova Scotia route through town. So you can see the darker green here is a cycling route to the school. So it goes through most of town um, and make sure, make sure to connect to the schoolway. And then the kind of odor areas in the lighter gray connect to the trail system. So those are, this is the basis of the Bicycle Nova Scotia report. And it also, that report also includes some general design guidelines, such as um, areas for, if a road has slower vehicles, they may be a great option for unseparated bike lanes, whereas if you have a road with a higher speed limit, you want to, you want some kind of barrier between your car and, and your bike. So they also propose different options for those different roads and propose some traffic calming ideas. So for the first section, we'll talk about uh, Kinberg Street and Claremont Street. So here there were, in the Bicycle Nova Scotia report, it was identified that there was less traffic on the roads. Um, so it was, it's a really good candidate for potentially advisory bike lanes, which you can see the photo there in the bottom right. This is what an advisory bike lane looks like. You have one main central road, and then on either side you have bike lanes. As we see an approaching car, if there's no bikes around, there is still enough room for both cars to get by. This would not be a good option in uh, on roads with higher speed limits or higher traffic volume. So this is just a potential option uh, that could that could work. And then when respondents uh, for the survey kind of saw this concept idea, other survey suggestions just showed that they they might prefer traffic calming. Um, and reduce speed limits. Uh, adding, adding a crosswalk between the Bay Trail crossing on Kingwood Street, um, and also a multi-use path to accommodate pedestrians. The next uh, section of this route, which Catherine, can you um, just back it up for one one moment, real quick, just quickly? Um, the crosswalk. I just wanted to be clear. That's a crosswalk on Main Street. Is that the thought? That's where we're talking about, right on the corner. I think so. That was a suggestion that was in um, from one of the respondents. Yeah, that would. I think that would make sense. That's where people are crossing. I just um, make a note of that. Thank you. Um, can I interject? Um, we've been trying to get some kind of a safety measure put in place. It's up in the Long Hill Road. That crosswalk there, along there. Is that what you're talking? Yes. Yeah, um, we were told that it's not doable because it's considered a multi-purpose trail and because ATVs are vehicles. Um, we, we've Catherine, been I can speak to that one as the traffic authority. So um, you can't have the ATVs crossing on the crosswalk. So that's true. In the HRM, there's a number of places where they've designed sort of a dual crossing. So you've got an ATV crossing lane next to a typical pedestrian crossing. And okay. um, that that has been an acceptable kind of marking solution. So it does mean that you'll, you'd need twice the width within the roadway. Um, mm -hmm. And then potentially they can merge back together on the other side, depending on the width of the trail. So, uh, so it is possible. My, my concern there, of course, with traffic authority is just visibility from people coming in both directions on the corner. Yeah, that's always been a problem yeah, for, for, the, uh, for the cyclists and the users of the trail, especially going in one direction. It was you know, it's very, uh, visibility isn't great. And we've had many, many, I've uh, gone back through all the uh, files and they've been writing about it since 2002 and different uh, projects have been undertaken to, 
talks about amber light and things like that, but you know, we were, we were told that it couldn't be done at a crosswalk. I do think, I think that suggestion actually comes up on Main Street, whereas this particular one was talking about the Timber Street. So I, I, I do know the intersection that you're talking about near Main Street and Long Hill Road. I think it comes up actually in another suggestion on another slide. Um, but thank you for, for bringing that up. And Dylan, oh, thanks. okay. So Catherine, this is, yeah, because you're right. It does actually cross Kinburn Street and in some way highlighting where the trail crosses the street for motors. Yeah, the, the part where the trail crosses Kinburn Street just isn't highlighted in this green route that you see on the, because it, it goes beyond um, the, where they would propose to cross from Kinburn Street to Main Street here. Um, the, the trail crosses further down the road, if that makes sense. Um, okay, I'll move on to the Kinberg Street and the Clearway Street connection, which is where uh, the NSLC kind of comes into play here, and, and we appreciate that you're on the call uh, on here tonight uh, to listen in. Um, so this concept idea just creates a connection from our Kinberg Street onto Main Street, um, which is the which is a nice short route for people to get from Kinberg Street onto Clearway Street, which is uh, where the school is located. So this proposes cutting through um, the, no, the NSLC parking lot. So it's creating a multi-use path uh, through an area that's kind of already disturbed. We could make it off to the side. Um, so it's not in, in the way of, of vehicles or anything like that. And um, I think a lot of people are already using this pathway through. I don't think vehicles can make the throughway right now. Um, and that's not what this, this proposes in any way, but um, yeah, a multi-use path to connect those two streets would facilitate being able to get to the school and to the Dynamite Trail at the end of, at end of Clearway Street. So in the uh, survey, there was actually a lot of good feedback for this, a lot of support for this. And that's likely because this is already used um, for pedestrians to get from one street to the other. Thank you, Catherine. I do remember when Bicycle Nova Scotia, were, the folks were in town and they were taking a look at this and they looked at, you know, the back of the building and they looked at the other side by the fence and they kind of looked all around and, and I know they didn't come to a perfect plan to make it, um, to make it work. So, but I, but I appreciate that there's a, a number of options if that's something we could end up discussing further. Yeah, and I know this photo kind of shows it going right down through the middle of the parking lot, but um, perhaps it could be just a, a little sidewalk along the parking lot or something like that. So um, I don't think I noted this before, but for anybody you know hearing this, none of these concept ideas are set in stone. None of this is you know what we're gonna do or what we're gonna exactly what we're gonna include in the proposal. Um, this is just the first step. Um, we're still going through the engagement process. We want to hear from you. Um, and from the stakeholders and people who are actually biking in, in Mahone Bay um, so that we can put together a proposal of the ideas and suggestions that you have um, along with these concept ideas to come up with this really great feasible project um, and community group that people will use. Uh, so with that, uh, the next section of the route was Main Street. So uh, once you go through the NSLC parking lot there, there would be another proposed multi-use path along Main Street that connects to Clearway Street. So um, Main Street to Clearway Street, there was a new three-way stop that was just put in. Uh, so under design concept, it does say safer intersections and crosswalks for both pedestrians and bicycles. So this is actually kind of halfway there already. Um, in the Bicycle Nova Scotia report, I know they do suggest um, perhaps raised intersections and things like that. Um, I think the three-way stop has, has already done a lot to calm traffic in that area. You know, people are driving slower because they have to come up to a stop uh, and they're more aware of uh, potentially people walking or biking across, across that intersection. Um, but there's still more that is proposed for Main Street. Uh, these are different ideas that were submitted as responses from the survey. Um, so the ideas from the survey do connect a little bit further from what the Bicycle NS report suggested. 
um, so connecting a bike path along Main Street towards Nader's Cove. So that goes, um, that's not highlighted in the bicycle of the social report, but it is something that residents would like to see. Uh, speed reduction along Main Street to 30 kilometers an hour for bicycling. Um, this would this would make it a lot safer, especially when it gets busy during tourist season and there's lots of parking on the side. Um, so that was suggested. Uh, paved shoulders along Main Street um, and also preserving vegetation and mature trees. So this was actually a comment that a lot of uh, community members had, and I definitely understand the uh, you know, if we want to improve the infrastructure for active transportation, it may include expanding some sidewalks, uh, which may include some uh, vegetation management, but uh, something that we'll have to consider going forward and see uh, where we can conserve um, the trees and the mature trees, but still make active transportation accessible. The Clearway Street section um, going up by this school, a lot of people liked this concept idea and it would definitely facilitate kids getting safely to school if they want to bike to school. Um, and it would also give better access to the Bay Trail. So the, the concept idea that's proposed on Clearway Street is a multi-use path along the side, the side of the street. Um, so Catherine, I think for part of the way up as far as the school, that would be essentially adding to the existing pedestrian walkway and then from the school up, there's nothing to the trail. So that would be all new. Yeah. And then along Edgewater Street, a lot of people were in favor of a, a multi-use path along the waterfront. Uh, it would definitely highlight the beauty of Mahone Bay and I think a lot of people would would use that. Um, and we also had a comment um, from somebody who also reviewed the CBCL report that liked the idea of kind of connecting the multi-use waterfront path with uh, a pedestrian bridge over the, the inlet there um, from Edgewater Street to Main Street. And the last concept ideas proposed in the bicycle Nova Scotia report was uh, traffic calming measures on Fulberg Road and Pleasant Street. So these streets had higher traffic volume and higher speeds and uh, just traffic calming measures that would, would slow the cars down um, could create an area where we could have some shared bike roadway uh, paths. These roads will also help with the connection to the Bay, Bay Trail. So it would um, kind of complete the connection from trail to trail uh, going through town. So this is the final uh, survey results. So each of the design concepts that were proposed in the Bicycle Nova Scotia report um, were in the survey and you can see which, which concept ideas respondents preferred. The waterfront was the most preferred. Um, and then also the uh, the multi-use path to the way and uh, dynamite trail for, which I think would be uh, great for the kids biking to school. And of course, for reduced speed limits, those three were the highest, most preferred responses. So the next steps in this project, um, staff uh, are going to compile all of the, the feedback that we received from the survey. As well, we received some written feedback and emails. We want to compile all of this, um, highlight the most favored routes, and uh, provide that to council. And then we'll use the concept ideas uh, to develop a funding application to the Department of Energy and Mines Connect to program. And uh, I believe we hope to put in something by the end of the summer. Dylan, you can correct me if, if I'm wrong on that. but. Um, yeah, we'd love to get any more feedback and, and get this project moving. So with that, I want to thank everybody for listening in this evening. Um, I'm happy to take any questions, start any discussion. Um, I'll just open it up to anyone who wants to jump in. Thank you very much, Catherine. I just, you know, you commented on the timeline for the Connect2 program. 
and it has changed just a bit every year in, in my memory. Um, so it's been anywhere from June to uh, to the end of September. Uh, I think indications are that it will be late summer, early fall this year, which means that we won't receive confirmation of funds until around Christmas time, which means that we would be immediately asking that it be carried over to next year, which you know I tend to assume would be their expectation. So um, most likely if we do develop a, a project that council would like to see implemented next year, we would want to have that ready for application to the province by the end of the summer. But um, it probably wouldn't be happening until at least next year. And if anybody wants me to, to flip back to a slide to talk more about a, a certain concept idea, I'm happy to do that too. I know when I was looking at the survey results, I found it really interesting that even though Bike Nova Scotia kind of, I guess, ruled out the Edgewater Street path, um, I think mostly because when they collected their data, it did show that the vehicle speeds were high, so it would be maybe the safest bet for a bike path. But if like that's obviously what people want in terms of like where they probably cycle on the road now so I thought that was really interesting just to hear the difference in you know like the original report versus what people are probably biking along the road right now and a bike path might be safer there anyways so more better than it or it's better than nothing I guess so it was just an interesting comment I thought <laughs> Yeah, it is uh, interesting to see the differences. I know, I know that people at Bicycle Nova Scotia are, you know, they're likely cyclers themselves. Um, I'm not sure if they're located in the home bay themselves, but it's interesting to see, you know, just because we have a concept or an idea or think something might be um, ideal, the people who are actually biking and actually using the trails to get to where they're going um, is different than what we might have thought. I think with Edgewater Street in particular, there's also um, probably we get a little hung up on the long term because the town's long term intentions for Edgewater Street since what, uh, Mr. Mayor, 2016, I think, <laughs> have been to do shoreline improvement to uh, to to mitigate um, the impact of storm surge and sea level rise. And that there was a, a nice concept with that, that as part of that, we would have some additional space on the water side of the existing roadway to really do a nice offset trail. Um, in the meantime, you know, we, we know we don't have that, but I was having a conversation with Public Works about the constant washouts and they would love to, at some point, be able to just add a little bit to the paved shoulder there, which in the short term probably would go a little ways towards improving the cyclist safety. Um, but, you know, of course it would, it would <laughs> take you that much closer to the, to the ocean. So it's a we got to be careful with that as well. But I just say it's interesting, you know, with the with the bigger project concept in mind, and we're kind of in a wait and see mode for the last five years while people continue to use it. Because like you say, Sarah, it's a beautiful view. People want to go that way. Um, I I think it's a wonderful and um, that this is happening. I think it's way overdue, and um, and um. In respect of um, planning and so on, a lot of um, other things can be done in advance. Um, years ago, when my children were going to school, they used to have bicycle rodeos at school, and we have our CP officers and police officers in different places we live. Sometimes police come and uh, do a safety, what they call a rodeo, bike rodeo, and, and um, spend a morning uh, teaching kids the rules of cycling and, and so on so a lot more I think we do need to promote more because we I see a lot of cyclists but not not that many really from Mama Bay Rosemary and you know Rosemary's um, and her husband have done a lot to build the cycling business in town but a lot of people don't live in town buy their product and use the trails so I think that even you know putting those things in place before even before the infrastructure is built is probably a good idea too to to do that and encourage that. 
Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and I you know it's exciting that things are starting to open up and people are um, being able to you know, get together and hopefully we'll be able to do those activities um, and have more education around active transportation and, and yeah, get more people involved in it. Certainly something I remember growing up in Mahone Bay that I don't feel is that, you know, as much time as I spend in town, I don't see the little gangs of kids with their bikes commuting around from place to place, which was certainly my experience. And we, we'd leave the house first thing in the morning with the bikes and just tear around town all day. And I know I biked all the way down Edgewater many times because going down underneath Keddie's Bridge was a fun spot to go as a kid. So um, we uh, we certainly were all over town at that time, and it's a busier place, so I understand parents' reticence to just let their kids out for the day. Anybody else have any any comments, questions, suggestions? Well, thank you, Catherine, for taking the time. Maybe people will watch this once it's available and you'll get the questions by email. Yeah. All right. Well, thank everyone. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us this evening. And you know how to how to get in touch with us if, if you have any more questions. Um, and also the, the climate at townofmahombay.ca email address is, is available if you have if you'd like to send in emails, questions, things like that. Thank, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Good nice night, all. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Have you a good night.